Hi everyone, welcome back to Box of Delights. Today we're revisiting a game that we ran a series for many, many years ago, right at the beginning of Box of Delights. And what I want to look at today is this expansion, Warriors of Middle-earth to War of the Ring. This expansion is a couple of years old now, but I've only just bought it, so I'm going to just give you a quick demo of how this plays. Inside the box you get a whole bunch of new miniatures, a couple of new dice, a rule book, some new reference sheets, and a whole bunch of new cards, and that's what we're going to show you now. During setup, there's not actually very much in the way of differences. The Free Peoples in the Shadow get these three new reference cards for the new units that come with this expansion. These new units will act as allies. They're kind of like allies that you can call in to help you as the game progresses. So each one gets these. So we've got the, the Dead Men of Dunharrow, the Eagles of the Misty Mountains and the Ents of Fanghorn for Free Peoples. And then over here for Shadow, we have the Corsairs of Umbar, the Hillmen of Dunland and the Broods of Shelob. Wow, look at those spiders. And each one of these allied factions has its own set of miniatures. So these are just reference cards. And what's important is that at the top of these, they tell you what conditions are needed to bring those allies into play. The second new thing in setup is a new deck of cards. It's a new event deck and it sits separate from the existing decks, your character and strategy. These are called faction events. Now, if you remember at the start of every turn, you draw one card from your strategy, one from your character. I'm just going to grab a couple extra just to give me some options for the, for the demo. You also grab one card from this new faction event deck. These cards may bring new figures into play. So a great fleet, for example, says recruit one Corsairs figure in Umbar or add it to the starting setup. Okay. What that means is since the Corsairs are not in play yet, instead I take those figures and place them on this reference card ready for when they do come into play. So it's kind of like boosting up. They're kind of massing those allied factions. We do the same for Free Peoples. This one is... The Union of All Our Strength says discard an Ent, Eagle or Dead Men faction event card from your hand to choose one faction event card of a different faction in your discard pile and add it to your hand. So there's different ways of bringing back these cards. And that's another interesting point. If you remember with our regular event cards, character and strategy, once you've played they're out of the game forever. With the faction event cards they form a discard pile and once this deck, this draw deck is empty you'll reshuffle your discards to create a new deck. So it plays a little bit different. The other thing is, you'll remember we had a hand limit of six event cards. Right? You must discard down to six if you have more of that. The faction event cards, although they're considered event cards for every other purpose, they don't form part of that hand limit. They have a separate hand limit. And you can have up to four of these. So six of these, four of these. So ten cards in total. We're keeping Gandalf the Grey as Free People's Faction Guide, and here's an interesting point already. It says, after you use an event action die result to play an event card, you may immediately draw an event card of that type. Um, so you have a second one. So, like I say, these faction cards are just like every other event card. If I play this, I immediately draw another one, okay, because of Gandalf's ability. Right, so we'll keep Gandalf there. Let's roll our dice. I told you I was just going to demo it like a regular game. And the same for Shadow. I've got one eye here. That's going in the hunt for the ring box. Leave me with these six dice. Now remember, I told you that this expansion comes with two new dice. This is the Free Peoples, this is the Shadow. You don't roll this until you've got one of these new factions in play. Right, so they just sit at the side of the board waiting for now. Let's start by spending one of these character dice for free peoples and moving the fellowship. The one thing I should mention too, I've got all these event cards with this expansion. There are a bunch of cards that replace some of the base game 
cards. All right, so look at it in the setup. There's, um, you know, there's there's cards in the base game that reference the the eagles or the ents, for example. Those cards are removed and replaced with new cards, new event cards from the expansion. All right, so three peoples have moved. Now a shadow, as a result of having one hunt here, gets to roll one d6 to hunt for the ring. Doesn't get a success. We're looking for a six. Okay. Now remember, these are dice that I provided myself, right? I, I don't like the uh, the regular little white ones that come with the game. The blue and red ones make it easier for me to play. So nothing to do with the expansion either. All right, so that's three people's done. Now the shadow. I'm going to play one of these event dice. And I haven't shown you this yet, but... There's a nice new reference chart, one for each player, that comes with this expansion. It tells you what these new dice do, but also in the middle is a summary of what the base dice do. So we just played an event die, which says we can draw an event card, or we can play an event card. Neat, huh? So with that event die, we are going to play the many kings of the, to the service of Mordor. Recruit two Southron and Easterling regular units in each of three different Southron and Easterling settlements. We could have used a muster die. We've got one army muster here. And the settlements are towns, cities and strongholds. We've got a town here, we've got a town here. We're going to put a couple of regular units in each of these two. It said three, didn't it? This orange area is a South Ron and Easterling nation. And we've got more down here, so we could put here, here, or here. So we'll put a couple more here in Umbar. Right, back to Free Peoples. And what I'm working towards in this little demonstration is trying to activate one of these factions. So for Ents of Fangorn, it says if Saruman's in play and a companion or, fellow of the, or the fellowship is in Fangorn, then we can uh, use a muster or recruit die to bring the fa uh, the Ents into play. The Eagles of the Misty Mountain. If the Fellowship's last known position is not in Rivendell, so if we've moved out of Rivendell and got revealed, or if Gandalf the White's in play, then we can bring the, the Eagles in. And for the Dead Men of Dunharrow, if Aragorn or Strider is in or within one region from Eric, which is just here, okay, south of Fangorn, below Helm's Deep, then we can bring the Dead Men of Dunharrow into play. Okay, So that's what we're kind of working towards. So let's do that. Let's move the Fellowship once more. This is the second time we've done it. There's a, a blue die already here. So that's a plus one for the, the Shadow. And they're looking for a six. No, just missed again. That's four. The Fellowship's not quite revealed yet. And then for the shadow player, we've got, if the South Run or Easterlings are at war, we can get the Corsairs of Umbar. The Hillmen of Dunland, if in Saruman is in play, that's all we need. And then for Shelobs, if the Fellowship's last known position is not in Rivendell. Okay, so a little bit easier, I think, for the shadow. So why don't we use that army master die we saw last time to move the South Rons one little spot down the political track. Let's just plot on a little bit. I don't think we're going to do it this turn. Let's use this one to play this. And Dine's, Dine Arafat's guard. Recruit one Dwarven unit and one Dwarven leader in Erebor. Okay, now that was... A muster die, not an event die, so Gandalf's ability does not kick in. I think we're just going to speed things along a little bit and, and just um, I don't know, move a couple of armies. And for, uh, let's say three people's pass, let's move again. Let's do this. Do it one more time. This time we'll do something like this. 
then free people, they're going to use their will of the West and move that fellowship one more time. They might not want to do this in reality, but let's give it a crack. So uh, Shadow's got plus two. All right, they failed again. And then Shadow's just going to use that one to move an army with a, with a leader, something like this. Okay, let's um, draw back up for the next turn. So remember, one of each event plus one faction. Let's put another eye for the shadow. It's got two. We had to put at least one because three people's moved last time. And then of course draw one, two, and then one extra. Right, it says Wild Hillman. Recruit one Dun Lending figure in each of the three Dunlan settlements or on your starting setup. We might actually play one of these this time. It depends what our dice do. Let's roll. Okay, that's a good set of dice. And then for shadow. And we wanted some muster. We got a couple in there, that's a little better. Three peoples don't have any event dice, so we're still not using Gandalf's ability. Let's um, let's move the fellowship again up to four. Two dice for Shadow in the hunt for the ring. All right, we've got a success this time. Let's see what they draw. Oh, the eye says. Hunt damage equal to number of successes, and then the fellowship is revealed. So we'll just take that damage as corruption and then reveal the fellowship. It's spot number four. Now let's assume the fellowship goes the long way around one, two, three, four, something like this. I mean, he could even go into South Dunland if we wanted to. One, two, three, four. We're not moving through Shadow Strongholds, and because we've been revealed by Shadow, we can't end in a free people's stronghold or city. All I'm working towards really is just showing you what happens when, when we get Strider down down here, which um, which may well happen very, very soon. But even more than that, I think we can bring the spiders into play. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's go ahead. We're trying to show you the expansion anyway. So, Broods of Shelob. If the Fellowship's last known position is not in Riverdale, it's not, you may use one muster or recruit Faction die result to bring the spiders into play. All right, so let's do that. Flip this over before we bring these in. Let's play an event die. We'll play the Wild Hillman event card. It says recruit one Dun Lending figure in each free Dunland settlement or add them to the starting setup. Okay, so Dun, uh, the Wild Hillman are not in play right now, but we do have their reference card. So what we would do instead, these are the spiders, is place the figures here on this card. These are the Dunlending figures. And there's two Dunland settlements. North Dunland, South Dunland, right where our fellowship is. So two figures. And they'll just sit there on this card until the Dun the, the Dunlending come into play. Let's say free people's pass and it's back to shadow. Now we can play the broods of Shelob the spiders. It says if the fellowship's last known position is not in Rivendell, you use one muster or recruit faction die. So we do have a muster. This is the faction die. And that's the recruit symbol. It's on there a few times. We're not rolling that die yet, so we can't use that one yet. But we can use this muster die, it says, to bring the spiders into play. And what happens then, we flip this over. And it says, our starting setup, which may include additional spiders that we've accrued along the way, like we just did with the, the Dunlendings. One in Dolgold and one in Minus Morgul. So that's one up here. And one here. Now these extra units, they're not army units, so they don't contribute to the army. Remember there's a stacking limit of 10 units here, not including the leaders. They don't contribute. 
Uh, these are faction figures. They don't act like armies. They don't help control a region. They don't affect the political track. And none of the stuff that armies do. These are faction figures. If the army retreats, the army's eliminated, they're not affected. But they will help us in battle. Right? They're here as allies, helpers. Now there's some more details about each of the different factions. So if we look at the, the spiders, if we recruit them, they recruit to Dolgord or a Minus Morgul. There's no stacking limit. Spiders cannot move into a region with a free people's army or into an unconquered free people's settlement. Spiders are in the same region as the Shadow Army. And if there's no spiders in play, then they're eliminated. Okay, the special movement rules. And it says here, spiders do not form a shadow army. We've already said that by themselves. But if they're in the same region as a shadow army, they can move and attack with that army. So spiders are a little bit of an exception here. They will advance or retreat with an army. And it says if the army is eliminated, so are the spiders. Okay, so spiders are acting like a little bit of an exception. So do be careful of these extra rules. Because typically you'll be moving them with your faction event cards okay these faction units what i'd like to do is actually get these things fighting and i can show you what they do these faction figures are going to bring combat cards to a to a battle that's how they're going to contribute and we'll have a look at that when we make it happen first off let's hide the fellowship with this character die and shadow's going to muster and bring the saron nation to at war now, free peoples, I don't have another character die, so I'm just going to use an elven ring. Turn this to a character die. Give that to Shadow. Now, Shadow has a an elven ring they can use. If they use it, it's discarded from play. But elven ring means we can change a die. If you can't remember the, the rules of war of the ring, go look at my tutorial series. And now we get our regular turn. So with my character die, what I want to do is just separate Strider from the Fellowship. Let's say that Strider... Legolas and Gimli all go their own way. Strider, as a group of companions, has level three. Actually, let's put let's put Legolas back, and we'll take Boromir. And they can move up to three regions. One, two, three. So let's move them into Helm's Deep. And that means on our next turn, we can use this mustard eye. To bring in the dead men of Dunharrow. If Aragorn is or within one region of Eric, you may use one muster to bring the dead men into play. Okay, now notice that um, we haven't got a faction dice yet. Okay, this isn't in play. The next time we roll our dice, if the spiders are still in play, then the shadow will get their orange faction die. Right, we're just going to move this army in and the spiders move with them. Using this character die. And now free peoples are going to use their muster, the army muster, to put the dead men of Van Harrow into play. And it says starting set up two in Eric. These are the dead men. says, restrictions, dead men of Dunharrow are always together in one region, forming an army of the dead. And it says, if Strider or Aragorn is not with the army, then they are eliminated. It also says to move the army of the dead. Eliminate one dead men figure and move the remaining figures to an adjacent re region. You can repeat this process as long as there's more than one figure in the army of the dead. So definitely these are the Ent figures. And then they've got the, the Eagles. Friendly, huh? So they're going here in Eric. And when this army of the dead enters play, you've got to think of it as a single thing, right? A single army. Strider and any or all its companions, up to you, immediately moves to lead the army of the dead. Now we've got a faction in play. Obviously, Free Peoples is now going to start rolling their die, their faction die. And if they use the recruit action, you use these just like you do regular dice, then you're just going to keep adding men to the army of the dead. So this single army led by Strider obviously has then this elimination. No dead men in the army of the dead, okay, if they all get wiped out. Or Strider 
slash Aragorn is not with the army. So if we choose to move Strider away, he gets eliminated for some reason, then the army of the dead vaporises and disappears from the game as well. And that's what's really cool about these new factions is they all bring their own little rules. So if we look at the Ents, for example, so they're going to start in, in Fangorn. And just like the Army of the Dead, they form their own little posse, if you like. They form the Entwood. And the Entwood moves. Let's, um, let's say we recruited a couple more in here. The Entwood moves by spreading out. You just take a figure and move it to an adjacent region. So the Entwood spreads out across Middle-earth. And what's cool is it grows at the edges. So if I've got two figures, I, re I recruit here in, in Fangorn. But as long as you're placing next to one another adjacent Ents, you can just keep spreading out the Entwood. And in this way, attack a shadow army adjacent. You simply sacrifice an Ent from the Entwood, roll three dice and score hits on four plus. And as a little bonus, if you manage to enter all thank with your Ents, and there's no enemies here, or you eliminate the last of the enemies here, then Saruman, who normally pops up in Orthanc, is eliminated from the game. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? Just like the Army of Dead, though, they need a companion. Not just Strider, any companion, or indeed the Fellowship. As long as there's a companion, or a Fellowship in Fangon, then the Entwood will continue to expand and, and play out. If that companion disappears from Fangon, then the Ents will no longer offer their support. And then the Eagles of Misty Mountains. So they're going to go in the Eagles Eyrie, which is all the way up here next to Rivendell. And the Eagles, when they move, they can move to anywhere on the board. They've got no restrictions. They're free. And the Eagles are driven very much by the faction events. So if we have a look at our faction event deck, we'll see cards like separate from the Fellowship one companion or group of companions if their level were four. Um, so basically it's a nice way to, to move companions out of the, the Fellowship. Upon Nazgul they bore, you can send the Eagles to fight the Nazgul. Okay, so lots of good stuff. And for Shadow, obviously we've talked about the spiders, and we're going to see them in just a moment play out in battle. For the Hillmen of Dunland, which we have two recruited already, so they're going to come into play in North and South Dunland, but they're going to have those additional two units because we played that event card to boost our setup. They've got a stacking limit of three. Uh, but when they move, they move up to two regions. And like spiders, they will attack with a shadow army that they're, they're with. I haven't shown you the Corsairs yet, the Corsairs of Umbar. So we were looking to put the Easterlings at war and start using their ships. Use the, the ships. They come into play in Umbar, right here at the bottom of the map. They recruit here as well. They do have a stacking limit of five. Incidentally, the game comes with eight of each of these new figures. So that's 48 figures new in this expansion. But the good thing about these units, the ships here, you'll play them with your faction cards and they'll do things like form a great fleet that helps you transport shadow armies around the map. But in general, if shadow armies in a region with the Corsairs, you can move these things and take two units with it, two army units, or any number of minions or Nazgul. And when these things move, they can move up to four regions. Or, if you want to move an attack, up to two regions, and then attack an adjacent region. Now, obviously, being ships, they can't just move everywhere and anywhere. They are restricted to the waterways of Middle-earth. So they can move to any of these coastal regions along the Western Sea. They can move into any of these Gondor areas, actually, because there's this, this river up here as well. Um, apart from Eric, they can't move into Eric. Okay, so any Gondor region apart from Eric. And they can also move here into Osgiliath. Okay, so they can come up this waterway, up this waterway. Right, not up here. Now, what I want to show you now, and I guess the last thing to sh really show you, is... Or maybe I can show you those dice as well. It's a battle here. And we're going to use the spiders as an example. Shadow has... An army die. So we're going to be a bit reckless here and we're going to attack Osgiliath. Of course, first off, that means we activate Gondor and move them one step down the political track. 
So here we are, we've got five regulars and a leader against two regulars. And the spiders don't count. So you've got a combat strength of five where the leader reroll. Okay, cool. Now there is a faction event card called Huge and Horrible. <laughs> it's a good one. Here it is, look out for it. It's one of the key cards that Shadow can play. And they'll play it when Sauron's at war. It means the spiders can help hunt down the Fellowship. And it says spiders in the same region with the Shadow army add to its combat strength. When one of their quarter battle effects is used, we'll see that in a minute. So they can add to the combat strength when they're huge and horrible. Now normally when you resolve the battle, the first thing you do is you're going to go to your hand of cards. And you're going to have a look. And remember, event cards have got two halves. And you may decide to choose one to use one of these combat cards, one of these effects. Now, with this expansion, instead of playing a combat card, you can instead decide to call to battle your allies, okay, the faction allies that are with you. Each, each faction has two call to battle cards, so we could use Hideous Speed or Webs of Shadow. Okay, let's have a closer look at those and see what they do. This one says, before the combat roll, roll one die. On a result of one or two, eliminate one of the spider figures. On a result of five or six, eliminate a free people's leader or a level one companion in the battle. <laughs> Those poor hobbitses. Webs of Shadow. Given there's no opponent leaders, this is the one we're going to play. If after the leader reroll, you scored more total hits than your opponent, you may eliminate one of the spider figures to score one additional hit. Now, ideally... All right, you're going to be waiting until a subsequent turn because we've got the spiders in play. When we next roll our action dice, we're going to roll this one with it. We might be looking for a recruit, get more spiders. All right, obviously, the more faction figures there are, the more powerful they become, and they don't always contribute to the stacking limit. All right, so there we go. So, webs of shadow. So we do our combat roll. Let's see what we let's see what we get. Now they've got a fortification here, so only six is a hit. So we got two hits, they got one hit. Let's just so we didn't need the spiders, but let's assume they got we got something like this instead. Right, we got one hit, we got a leader re-roll, still didn't do us any good. But we've got a casualty, and then the spiders can use their web of shadow. Eliminate one of the spider's figures to score one additional hit. So we could take this out, and then take this out, and then move in. Alright, so spiders are there to help us. As it goes, something like this is what actually happened. And now we'll move to a new turn, and we'll roll our dice. And this time we get to roll our faction dice as well. Let's put, um, let's put a couple of eyes in here. We don't want that fellowship pushing too far on. Okay, so fellowship gets the green die because they've got the army of the dead. And shadow, we still don't have Sauron in play, do we? Saruman in play, do we? But they do get this, oh my goodness. Lots of eyes. Okay. And then you can see here on this Free People's Faction die, we've got this symbol here. This is the, the play, play and recruit icons. So we can choose to play anything under the recruit options. So we can add a figure to the Army of the Dead bring one new faction into play if we've met its conditions rather than using a master die or play any faction event card regardless of its type and we would have drawn one more at the beginning of this turn so for example we've got this one Saruman is a neighbour play on the table if Saruman's in play uh, place three ent figures on this card if they use the voice of Saruman ability recruit one of these figures in Fangorn 
or add it to our starting setup if the Ents are not in play yet. And you've got to love seeing an army of Ents spreading out across the board, right? It's going to look neat. It's going to look neat. Well, that's it. That's Warriors of Middle-Earth expansion. There's so much more to learn and explore as you see these different faction figures appearing on the map. And, yeah, you can see already that Middle-Earth is starting to look a little bit more busy. Army of the Dead here, and all right, we've 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 jumped ahead, but we've got the Entwood spreading out across the map, spiders and ships, moving units, making them more mobile. It's going to have so much more variety to your games. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.